this tutorial is designed to show students how to calculate measures of central tendency, distribution, and shape. So the measures of central tendency we will be calculating are the mean, median, and mode. Measures of dispersion will be range, variance, and standard deviation. And skew measures of shape will be skewness and kurtosis. So we're given this data set here where we have categories ranging from 0 to 9 to 49. We have frequency distribution, so the number of people which fall within each category. And we have x, which is the midpoint of each category. So what we'll be doing is calculating the vectors which were highlighted on the previous slide. To begin with, we'll start with our measures of central tendency. So let's look at the mean, or x bar. Here we need to get f times x. So, if we firstly start off by copying in our frequency and our midpoint from our table previously. So the frequency starts at 9, 42, 34, 12, and 3. And our midpoint starts at 4.5, 14.5, and 44.5. So we can observe what we've done here is literally just copy in our table where we have frequency and x. So the next step is to get f times x. So we start a new column, fx. So 9 times 4.5 gives us 40.5. 42 times 14.5 gives us about 609. And working on down this way, we get 833, 414, and 133.5. So we've calculated our fx column. We now need to sum this column, and when we do so, we get 2030. Now note, our formula also requires n, the number of observations. So n, the number of observations, is the total frequency. So in this instance, the frequency adds to 100. So we apply our x bar formula for the mean which gives us 2, 0, 3, 0, over 100, resulting in a mean value of 20.3. So we've calculated our mean. We note the next value we need to calculate is our median. So to start with the median, we have to find the middle category of our data. So we're going to look at the cumulative frequency column, so CF. This is essentially the running total of the frequency column. So CF in the first instance is 9. The frequency of the second column is 9 plus 42, which gives us 51. CF for the next column is 9 plus 34, giving us 85, and so on down 97 and 100. The final value in your cumulative frequency column will always be observations you have. Okay, these will always be identical. So we have the cumulative frequency, and what we want to do from this then is pick our middle value. So 100 is our total number of observations, so our middle value will be 50. And 50 must lie within this category. It has to lie below 51. So we identify our middle category, our median category, as being 10 to 19. So our midpoint lies within this category, our fifth position. So we take this as our starting point and we apply our formula, which is the lower value the, value the median can be, which is 10. We have n over 2, so number over 2, minus the frequency preceding the median, frequency in the median category, multiplied by our class width. So, 
let's work this out. Our median, which we'll abbreviate to MED, is equal to the lowest value this can be, which is 10, taken from our initial table, plus 100, our number of observations divided by 2, minus the frequency preceding the median, so this is 9, the total frequency before it, all over the frequency in the median category, which is 42. We multiply this by the class width, and the class width is 9. So again, this is taken from our initial table, where we see the difference between 10 and 19 is 9. We work this out, and we get 18.9 as our median value. So that's the middle value of our data set. The next step is to calculate the mold. And for this, we need to identify the modal category, which is the category that has the highest number of observations in it. So we look for the highest frequency, and we find that the highest frequency is 42. So we pick our 42 category. So, the frequency for the mode is in this. We apply the formula, which is the lowest value the mode can be, plus F1 minus F2. So, it's the frequency in the modal category minus the frequency preceding it, all over F1 minus F2 plus F3. Our F1 is the frequency in the modal category, and F3 in the category following the mode. And we multiply by class width again. So, for the mode, we have the lowest value the mode can be, which is 10, plus F1, the frequency in the modal category, which is 42, minus the frequency preceding the modal category, which is 9, all over F1 minus F2 plus F1, which is 42, minus the frequency after this, which is 34. So plus 42 minus 34. We multiply this by the class width, which is 9. When we work this out, we get a modal category value of 17.2. So our mode is 17.2. So here, we've now calculated all our measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. So we'll now progress on to the next step, which is calculating the variance and the standard deviation. So note the first step for the variance is we must calculate x minus x bar. So we need another category now, which is x minus x bar. x is our midpoint, and x bar is the mean which we calculated previously. So we need a mean value of 20.3. So the first value we have is 4.5 minus 20.3 is minus 15.8. Next value is 14.5 minus the mean value of 20.3 and is minus 5.8. We work our way down as such. Next value is 4.2, 14.2, and 24.2. So we've now calculated x minus x bar. The next step is to actually square this. So we will get x minus x bar squared. So calculating this out, fi minus 15.8 squared is 249. And note when we square our value, the minus sign disappears. 
minus 5.8 squared is approximately 33. I'm rounding to the nearest whole number. Next value is 18, 202, and 586. So we now have x minus x bar squared. The final step is to multiply by f and then sum this. So we need another category, f times x minus x bar squared. And so basically what we have for this category is 249 multiplied by the frequency of 9, and so on down. So the first value we have is 2247, then we have 1413, 600, 2420, and 1757. Now note the final stage is to add these. We get a value of 8436. So we now have the top part of our formula. We have the sum of f times x minus x bar squared. And we need to put this over n minus 1. So we'll calculate out our variance. which is equal to the value we calculated of 8436 over n minus 1, n being 100, minus 1. We get a value of 85 for our variance. Now it is interesting to note that the standard deviation formula for this is exactly the same as the formula for the variance, with the exception that we have a square root sign. So to get the standard deviation, all we have to do is get the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is equal to the square root of 85, giving us approximately 9.23. And the final measure of dispersion we want is the range. And the range is essentially the largest values that you can take minus the lowest values that you can take. So if we look here, the largest possible value our data can take is 49, and the lowest possible value is 0. So the range we want to calculate is 49 minus 0, giving us a range of 49. So we've now calculated our variance, standard deviation, and our range. The next